All right, now we're ready to get into ZBrush. Now you need to have ZBrush version 4R6. It has to be the latest version of ZBrush. ZBrush is not a cheap program. It's a sculpting program, much like Mudbox, which is a free alternative. I don't know how to use Mudbox, and I'm still learning ZBrush myself. So if uh, you can't afford ZBrush, then use whatever other program you have to use or you know how to use to create your high polygon model. But for this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and use ZBrush uh, version 4R6. Go ahead and open up ZBrush. As soon as ZBrush is open, uh, you're going to get this little window is going to pop up at the top. Now, if you're completely unfamiliar with ZBrush, never used it before, just do what I do. All right. I've set up the mesh and I've set up the texture and everything we've done. I've set it up so that way if you do exactly what I do and click what I click, you won't screw anything up. It's very easy to mess up in here and have to close it and open it and start from scratch. So just pay close attention and do exactly what I do. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and hide this light box. Let's go ahead and click hide and don't click anything in here. First thing we're going to do is come up here in the upper right hand corner and select import. Now with import selected, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go directly to my desktop. I'm going to open up my exported OBJ and I'm going to select the low poly upper chest that we created earlier and I'm going to select open. Now I'm going to left click anywhere in this viewport, preferably in the center, and I'm going to hold down the left click and I'm going to drag the mouse. It's going to create the object. The size does not matter. Just drag down. The size doesn't matter. Just continue to drag. As soon as you're done, release your left mouse button. Now don't click anything in here. All right. Otherwise, you'll have to close the program and start over. All right. So come up here and click edit. All right. Now you're safe. Okay. So let's talk a bit real fast about how to do the controls so you'll be able to look around. ZBrush is way different than 3ds Max. It's a little bit like Maya's movement but anyways if you just left click anywhere in this gradient area if you just kind of left click and move your mouse as you can see it will rotate the model uh, if I hold down my alt key and I press my right mouse button it will kind of pan it and if I hold down my control key and my right mouse button it will zoom in and out so left mouse button with neither control or alt click rotates it so you can kind of look around it alt kind of moves it around on the screen and control and right mouse button kind of zooms in and out All right so that's how the controls work in here for looking around and manipulating the model throughout the viewport now another cool trick is if you're holding down your left mouse button and you rotate the thing and let's say it's kind of at an angle like this but you kind of want to have it snap to a front, left, right, or back view, or top or bottom. You can press shift while holding down the left and it will snap. See how it snapped? If I release it, it kind of goes back. So I can come to the side, press shift, and it'll snap. Now the trick to this is, and it's kind of tricky sometimes, is let's say I get the angle, I press shift, and then I release my left mouse button, and then I release shift okay and then it will stay so that's how you do it so you want to practice around with the moving and the move press shift then release mouse button then release shift that's kind of how it works it's awkward but you get used to it at first and then whenever you go back into 3ds max and try to move around you'll get confused like how do i move <laughs> you know? you'll have to retrain yourself it happens to me all the time anyways that's the movement so go ahead and center your model a little bit and kind of practice moving it around so that way you're not so confused Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide this by polygroups, and we're going to do that by going down into our polygroups option on the right hand bar. You'll see tools, and then come down here to polygroups, drop that down, and you're going to select auto groups with UV and just click that once, and then close this window. And then come up here to your sub tool, drop that down by left clicking on it, come down, and you're going to click on split which is below delete and all that. Let's click split and you can grab this toolbar. See how it turned into an arrow and you can just drag that up. So you can just click here, left click when it turns to the up down arrow and that's how you kind of scroll when you have menus open. So go ahead and move this up and we're gonna go over here under split and we're gonna select groups split. 
this window is going to say, oh no, this is undoable. Just click always OK, skip this note until next restart. And now as you can see, remember how we divided our UV map? So here's the front. We kind of split this up and preset this up so we could do this in 3ds max when we were adjusting our uv if i click there remember we put that side on the back and here we had the other side on the front ah see that's why we did that earlier so this is going to be easier to manipulate but anyways the first thing we're going to do is come up here to the first top one which will be the front chest and we're going to select that and go ahead and close this sub tool by just clicking there so now we have this selected now a thing to note is I can only make adjustments to the part that's selected. I could click here all day and it'll do nothing to this section. All right, I cannot make any changes to that because it's a separate poly group. This area here, I can make changes to. Don't click in there, you'll mess it up. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to add our mask to this and create our scales. But first thing we need to do is we need to go drop down geometry, deselect SMT, which is subdivide smooth modifier and you're going to divide this, right? And we're going to divide it two times. Now, you're probably wondering, what does that do when we divide it? What dividing does is if I drop this back down to one and I select this poly F tool, see how many, this is how many polygons we had originally. Here's our polygons. Now, if I deselect this and I raise this subdivision up by one and I reselect this poly F tool, look how many polygons there are now. There's a buttload more. And if I deselect this again, move up to the subdivision three, and I look at how many polygons there are on it. Now there's a ton of polygons, all right? Because now we're working with a high poly model, and this ain't even nowhere near as high as we're actually gonna go. There's gonna be uh, probably close to a million polygons by the time we're done, or a million points, rather, vertices. So I'll go ahead and deselect that. We don't need that open. All right, go ahead. We're up to three. We're gonna drop geometry down, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mask our borders. So we're gonna go into masking. So drop down masking deselect groups and deselect crease. Now, if this mask by feature option is not in masking, you're not using version 4R6 because it's new to 4R6. It's not in 4R5. You have to have version 4R6, so you wanna make sure you update if you're not using 4R6. So go ahead and select mask by feature. That masked our borders. You can kind of see it grayed out here. Let me hit Control Z. See how that is? Now it's not grayed out, but if I go ahead and I select mask by feature, it kind of makes it the same color as the deselected poly groups. It means we cannot make any changes to that masked area. Just wanted to explain that. Now we're gonna have to redo that mask by border here in a second. I just wanted to show you that's what a mask is. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to alpha, go ahead and select alpha. Don't come down at an angle because it'll close that window. Just left click on alpha and then kind of come directly sideways over like that. And we're gonna come down here, we're gonna select import. Now we're gonna to go to our desktop and we're gonna select that scales PSD that we created in the previous tutorial video. And we're gonna select open. All right now, it, there's our scales. Now they're very, very tiny. If you look at this window, it looks very tiny. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we're gonna select mask by alpha, drop that down and click mask by alpha. Now it looks kind of crappy, so what do we gotta do? We're gonna have to add some more polygons to this so that makes it look nicer. So I just wanted to show you that if you try to mask at a low poly count, your mask will look like crap. So I'm gonna hit Control Z, and I'm gonna drop down this, and I'm, well, first thing, open up masking, remask your border, and then close masking. We're gonna go into deformations, and we're gonna come up here to polish, and I want you to just drag polish all the way out and see how that kind of smoothed it out and polished it up. All right, we can close deformations. Now what you're gonna do is come out here to anywhere in the gradient, we have to deselect that border. So hit control, hold down control, and then drag your left mouse and make a little box and then release the box. Just release your left mouse button and it'll deselect any mask you have. Then release control on your keyboard. Now come up here to geometry and we're gonna divide this up to five. So we're going to divide it again and we're gonna divide it one more time. Now we're at five subdivisions. If you were to set, there are a ton. You probably can't see them, uh, but there are a buttload of polygons now. So go ahead and close geometry, come down here to masking, and we're gonna go straight and we're gonna mask by alpha. Look how much more clearly that mask came in. There's our scales. Now what can we do with this? Well, I'm gonna show you. 
we're going to do with this is first we want to mask our border along with the scales so we don't mess up our edges. We want our edges to always be masked before we make changes. We're going to close masking. Actually, uh, first thing we're going to have to do is hold down control and then just click so that we can inverse, you know, the mask. If you, if you, without dragging, if you just hold down control and then click in the gradient, it will invert your mask. So you select the opposite. And that's exactly what we want to do is we want to invert that mask. So come out here, click that, and it inverts our mask for us. Now we have a really good selection so we can do something to us. Uh, we also want to go ahead and mask our border. So come up here, mask by feature, select border, and yours should look like this. All right, that's exactly what you want. Now we can go ahead and drop masking, come up here, open up deformations. And we're going to use the inflate tool. We're going to inflate the parts that are not masked. So I'm going to come up here and instead of dragging this, I'm going to click on the word inflate. It's going to give me a little zero there. It's very hard to see. And I'm going to type in, say, I don't know, I'm going to guess 25 and press enter. That looks like a pretty good scale to me. So there's my scale. And, hmm. Yeah, I think I like that. So now I'm going to drop this deformation down. I'm going to hold down control and make the little box deselect my mask. I'm going to go up here to geometry and I'm going to go ahead and divide it one more time. So just hit divide. Now we're up to subdivision six. And as you can see, that's 460,000 points, rather vertices. So now I'm going to come back here to deformations. Uh, or not deformations, go back to mask. Remember, we always got to mask our border. So go mask by feature, border, click mask by feature. Now our border is masked, so our edges are safe. Drop down deformation and go ahead and polish the living crap out of it. And give it a second. And there's our scaled normal. Like I could have done the shadowing better whenever I took the screenshot in 3ds Max. This is basically just to give you an idea though. So, oops. If I take this, I hold down shift. I'm going to zoom in, so I'm going to hold down my alt control key and my right mouse button zoom in. And one thing you can do if you want to take the time to do it, I'm not going to really, but I'm just going to show you, is you come up here to Z intensity, drop this down to like, I don't know, um, a 15, and take your draw size down and shrink it, and take your focal shift down. So it looks something like that. You can actually kind of blend these in a little bit better so you could take the time to do that and sculpt each one of these individual scales out another way to fix that again is to make the shadows a little bit more apparent in the alpha mask that we created so you go in mess with the lighting but this is just an example i'm just showing you what you can do with this so i can come through and do this with each individual if you want to take the time to do it you can or you can just fix your alpha adjust your alpha so you get a better Better scaled appearance, but this will this will work out, I guess. I wish it had turned out better for the video. It would have looked better if I'd have done the lighting better to have more of a shadow coming off of each scale over onto the next one. It would have looked better. Anyways, back on uh, back on point. It was just an example. Now there's our scales. So now what we can do is we can come over here and we got to do the same thing basically to the back side because I wanted to have scales on the back 